Ladies and gentlemen, another episode of Pixels, Plastic, and Ink. Tonight on Pixels, we're going to do Amazon Fallout series review, the new series based off the video game. What are our thoughts? What are your thoughts? Star Wars released their new trailer for their new animation. And boy, I think we're, we're pretty damn excited. G.I. Joe Transformers crossover film. Finally, 40 years later, what are our thoughts? Then we jump into plastic. NECA Holothon dropped this morning. Uh, all the Ninja Turtle figures, all the stuff from NECA. And then also, did Hasbro drop the ball with another G.I. Joe release? We'll talk about it. And lastly, Inc., Marvel Comics Blood Hunt crossover event for you comic heads. Stay tuned. This is Pixels Plastic Inc. Episode 2. Man, I'm 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 super super excited to talk about these topics. How how was your all week? How's everything oh, going? Doing pretty good and everything. I know uh, we're missing uh, one compadre down, Mister Maddox. But you know, if you uh, he did a he was on that holothon this morning. Woke up real early. He did it from Georgia. He did West Coast time, so I know he's tired and everything. But <laughs> he uh, stashed something. You watch. There's a special little uh, short that's running right now on the channel. Of a um, the punk turtles that he stashed for someone mm-hmm. in the Georgia area. So if you're out there, go to one of those targets. You may get something that you can't get online right now. Well, you know what? I think overseeing midnight construction of his new toy store also <laughs> uh, could put strain on the bandwidth. So exactly. uh, as we uh, inch closer to the official Pixels Plastic and Ink Whatnot store, uh, Chet is building out a full toy store. So that probably occupies most of his time nowadays dr brantley how's your week going it's going (laughs) i I got nothing at the holothon uh so uh you know i'm doing pretty good (laughs) as many others did uh in the same boat i got nothing at the holothon should be a limited release t-shirt and all i got was a (laughs) stupid (laughs) t-shirt uh well let's jump into our first segment Pixels. Okay, so uh, last week we did uh, our first ever Pixels Plastic and Ink show. We did the best video game uh, film adaptations, and it was Boy, if you hadn't checked out the episode, we did a, a tier ranking. It was very hard to put anything in an upper class. Wow. So whenever you see a video game adaptation in a TV series, well, I think there's some hesitation on whether or not it's going to be good. But the general consensus from the audience and critics has been overwhelmingly positive. So what would you think of the first two episodes, gentlemen? It was great. Uh I only played the Fallout game a little bit, but uh, you know, I I made it outside of the hatch. I think it was Fallout Four, uh, you know. So I mm-hmm. I knew all about the vaulty kind of stuff, and I hadn't played the other ones. Um, but it had the it got the tone right where it was a little humorous, but it also took everything very seriously, you know. Uh, but it was well done. Yeah, yeah, I have to say that I thought the acting was was legitimately straight on, 
and uh, very entertaining. Like I said, you know, I've never played the video game before, um, but I, I've seen I've seen some of the uh, playthroughs in certain situations. But it was just brilliantly written. Tone was fantastic. Uh, they start off it in just a very nice, lighthearted way, and then it just ramps down from there. And it was like, wow, like you know, everything that Jonathan Nolan has touched, like his brother, he he's done well on. And this just seemed like he got the tone, and like this, legitimately, I wish we would have had this last week because we would have had something to actually go in there. Well, the video games, movies, but we would have had something else to falter into mm-hmm. in the A section because. You know, I just thought it was incredibly entertaining. The the ghoul, like there were just so many great actors that were involved in this as well. Some surprising, some situations, but I just had a unexpected, never knowing what was happening feeling every time I watched the show. That's extremely hard to do nowadays. That actor that plays the ghoul, what's it? Does anybody know his name? Walter Goggins. He is so Open good Goggins, yeah. in all from the Justified. stuff that he's done. Uh, yeah, from Justified, mm-hmm. that's like most known role. But he's done a few other things. He's just so good. So I know when he was casted in, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. all right, he's going to be a good surprise. Like some of the best, uh, if you think, like, so he got cast from Justified mm-hmm. and uh, pretty, pretty epic. Um, and then uh, the guy from the main actor from Justified was in the Book of Boba Fett, or yes, was he yes, yeah. Of- and he was good too. Like, so it's funny, uh, those those two gentlemen mm-hmm. coming off that series. I thought it was really great. I think they capture the essence of the video game. Um, you know, again, always question marks whether or not they'll stick too too much to the actual game itself and not relate to the general audience. But I think you got some really great actors. It was kind of cool shot. Um, I think it has a lot of hope to continue to be successful. Um, and that's really promising because you know, Amazon Prime's had some wins and losses for mm-hmm. sure. Um, and we know the last video game, big TV series, Halo, that first season was kind of brutal. Uh, yeah. We talked about those season two much better, uh, but I'm glad this is starting off with the right foot. So um, I, I'm excited to see where they take it, but I love it, man. Like we last year, I think we were in a boat. We were like, where the hell's the good content? Yes. And uh, it feels like it's getting better. Like it's in, Right around the corner, some cool films are coming out and other TV series and new trailers. I mean, we had the Joker trailer that came out. Um, you know, I don't know what you all thoughts of it. Here's the thing. Again, I forgot who said Joker was going to be better than Deadpool. There might be some competition yeah. here yeah. because that trailer blew me away. And I'm, you know, like, I think when I say musical, when it said musical, I was picturing something yeah. different. Absolutely. So I'm like, oh boy, man, this would be great. And the only Oscar I would have if it's really great, can this Joker slide into the Batman universe mm-hmm. and then introduce a new bat? Like I know that you know the the joke the the real Joker the, the at the helm of the new DC universe, uh, Mister Guardians in the Galaxy himself. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a lot of faith in, but I would love to see. Uh, this Joker uh, transition into a greater universe. But um, what do you all think of the Joker trailer before we get into Star Wars? Shocked. Like I said, again, as we started hearing points of it being a musical, again, you start worrying like, oh, but just wow. It's, I think we have a, a process of this year seeing two really mega comic book movies hit. And I think that's good because everybody was saying we were having comic book fatigue. But I think when you have right material, you can break that fatigue. And Deadpool, and like they're giving fans what they want. You mm-hmm. want to see the Joker and Holly Quinn. You want to see Deadpool and Wolverine. And both studios decided to. And you know, I think that people have this misconception. This is not James Gunn's doing. This was the last regime that did the Joker. So obviously, you know, through the the Aquaman's and all the other stuff at the end. They had a prime uh, a prime film coming, and now we're getting to see the same thing with DC. Everybody, Kevin Fergie held off. He didn't want to do Deadpool, and everybody's like, no, give the fans what they want, and I think you're going to actually see the rewards at the box office for this guy. Yeah, and yeah, you said it was a musical, you know, and you think, oh, God, what are they going to do? But to me, it looks like the musical is going to be like inside their heads because they're both crazy. 
And so that's why they have elaborate production numbers and everything when the entire thing could take place inside the jail, you know, mm. essentially. Yeah. And it could just be that's how they're escaping uh, being confined is these, you know, mm -hmm. glamorous musical numbers and everything. Uh, but I mean, it looks interesting. It does. It does. Todd Phillips, man, like, you know, coming to play. And I, I would love to see an Arkham Asylum movie. <laughs> And bring in the bat and take place in the asylum with the Joker, with Harley Quinn. Oh, man, that would be some. You talk about appeasing all the fanboys and fangirls <laughs> out there, including myself. Um, but, yeah, I thought that really stood out. Another thing that stood out, the new Star Wars uh, Tales of the Empire animation. Uh, you know, like the last animation trailer we saw, X-Men 97, that, that's actually been really good. Mm -hmm. And it was like a throwback. When I saw this Star Wars, I immediately thought, like, this could be the best animation that they've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's just a trailer. Uh, but I thought, wow, this could be live action. But it's definitely an animation that I'm watching. What you all think of the, the new Star Wars animation dominating the Star Wars realm with good mm -hmm. stuff? Well, Look. we saw Tales from the Jedi, and that was extremely good. And then to flip that around another year later and do Tales from the Empire. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. I was like, you're getting uh, both points. Look, Star Wars animation is, I think they're al almost outdoing the live action stuff. Because like, not one almost. After, well, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> one after another has been uh, pretty good. Well, look, I, I like the Mandalorian. I thought they did a good job. I thought Ahsoka was pretty good. They've had their, you know, book of fets in certain situations that didn't level well, but uh, most of the live action stuff has been pretty good, but like every piece of like, you know, from the re-extended Clone Wars to like, you know, all the Bad Batch to they just like, wow, the animation department knows what they're doing. And also the voice talent's always spectacular with those shows. They always come down with people that, you know, voice actors that do a great job. So like I, you know, like if you're a Star Wars on that section of uh, Disney, you're probably smiling every time you see a new piece of animation come on your desk, man. Well, they just put out a couple weeks ago the Acolyte trailer, mm -hmm. and people were making fun of it. Mm -hmm. No one's making fun of this. You know, it's uh, it looks great. Uh, it had a you know consistent look and tone to it, and it looked like you know what people want from a Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It yeah, just put put Vader at the end. Wow, and it's just like that's all you need to do. What well, is <laughs> that? Doesn't great, hurt. No. There's such great bridges in this as well because you've got uh Grievous at one point, you see Dooku, you see uh Lord Sidious, then you see Darth Vader, you see like you know the Inquisitors. Like they just have General great... Grievous, man. I'm telling you, that's the wow. first time I looked like a real like man menacing because I've always thought that that character kind of looked a bit goofy. And it uh, from the snapshot that I saw in this trailer, I'm like, okay, he actually looks more menacing than it. It looks kind of more stick figure cartooner, you know, cartoony mm -hmm. when he first came on the scene. So I'm like, maybe someone actually animated him right. Um, so lots of those epic villains, um, man, I, I think it's going to do really well. Yeah, I've got to Star Wars for investing in all this animation. I've got faith in them that I think they could even do Jar Jar well. <laughs> uh, I think you take it you take it too far. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, man. Like Chronicles it, of it, Jar Jar. Like I said, you never know. Well, you know, there's a whole dark Jar Jar kind of like thing <laughs> that he was a civil warrior. I almost believe the Filoni and those guys could pull that off. Oh, they, they now, if, can you imagine if they all of a sudden came out with the dark history of Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> well, here's here's the thing. So on whatnot, there's a. Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, a, a customizer. Can uh, can I think it's Cantina Customs? Okay. Uh, I'll drop it in our video chat. But he does custom figures. That's where I got the Wolverine GI on, on a GI Joe. Uh, oh, okay. Card back. Mm -hmm. He did a Darth Jar Jar uh, figure. <laughs> with, and I'm like, when I saw that, I'm like, it's time. It's time for someone to make the movie. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Uh, it's, it's, um, it can only be animation. It. You can't do a live no, action. It has please, to be animation. No. <laughs> I mean, at least know. you do Jim Henson. Like you get Jim <laughs> Henson Studios. <laughs> um, in other news, uh, for forty year anniversary, lots of buzz. 
around Transformers. I'm excited to, to see a big announcement uh, with Hasbro and Robeson. I think we can talk about that uh, in a little bit on the plastic uh, um, piece or segment. But G.I. Joe and Transformers movie announced not a lot of details, but we've been asking for that. They teased it a bit in the last one. What do you think, Mr. Storm, as an avid G.I. Joe fan? Yeah, I know. This is <laughs> it's, teams, I mean, sh- this is like Kong and Godzilla, G.I. Joe and Transformers. We've been wanting to see it forever. And if Chet were here, he'd probably want to throw a mask in there. Uh, just not as big as a brand, unfortunately. <laughs> but but- you, could, you could tease him for, like, movie <laughs> two, you know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know what? I, I would love to see these two franchises get onto the screen. I think if, like, you know, you have a, like, you know, if you get Michael Bay to just do this or the guy that did um, Rise of the Beast, uh, because he he did a pretty good job of all those multiple characters around. Uh, I just don't have faith in the producer. If there's anything that's going to have me worry is that this is the same guy that did all the G.I. Joe movies, the same guy that did that Snake Eyes film, and he's also the same guy that's done all of the Transformer films. So I don't know, even though Steven Spielberg's executive producer, I can't remember the gentleman's name. That's the uh, main producer of it, but he's, he just has a way of like, you know, he's been teasing this stuff and yeah, we're going to do this. And he was like, Oh, snake eyes is going to be great. And then I saw sat in snake. Eyes. I was like, what the hell is this giant snake doing in this? And I was like, wow, bro. Like, how'd you mess this up? Like, it's like ninjas. <laughs> like how'd you mess this up? But he did. So, uh, I'd love to see the two franchises done right. Uh, I think it will be big. I think you're going to get in the best of both. Look, first of all, Hasbro doesn't lose on this. This is something that, wow, you imagine all the merchandise and crap they're going to be dropping. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> as long as it's not terrible, because they yes. will lose yes, if they spend like $400 million on this thing and <laughs> nobody goes. <laughs> you know? True, true. And yeah. you will have to spend $400 million. And even if it's a horrendous film, mm-hmm. uh, Cobra Commander side by side with Megatron, wow. sign me up all day yeah. long. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, I hope I hope they understand the impact here. Uh, wow. I really do. Yeah, the drunks three snake eyes was horrible. Yes, it was. Uh, there, there is hope though. There is hope. The last Transformers film w- wasn't bad. Also, can I say uh, I love that name, Drunk Mio. <laughs> like, is there better? If there's no better Star Wars username than that, brother. Great. Thanks for joining. <laughs> well, I think you need to be drunk to watch some of these films anyway. So, uh, <laughs> But I did like Rise. Was it Rise of the Beast, right? Uh, where you yeah. saw uh, uh, what was the like the Prime? What was his name? Pr- uh, Primal. Optimus Primal. That was a cool mm-hmm. character to see. He was. So, wow. Man, I really hope that uh, they do it right because I think everyone's been waiting for this, this crossover. Well, um, can you also imagine too like they will have a chance to actually hear uh, Peter Crowland's voice yet mm-hmm. again. And then imagine, you know, because look, I've, I've got a feeling, unfortunately, um, they're probably not going to have Chainham Tanning or anybody from that. But maybe The Rock is the probably long holdout that will come back to the Snake Eyes movie because, you know, he's revitalized his career anyway. So I could see them bringing him back as Roblox and imagine that on the screen. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted. I- I would start fresh. I would I don't too. Have any you know holdovers to <laughs> I Steven would too, Summers? But, it, but or if you saw the, the Rise of the Beast, movie, if you saw the end of the Rise of the Beast movie, they already have kind of linked some stuff already. So unfortunately, they're probably going to take it from that portion of that last it means minute. Nothing. So it's going to be old Transformers at least locked in. You <laughs> Look, know? but I I think they could bring the Rock back. Here's how you make the money. I'm gonna I'm gonna give away. This is free Hollywood. This is free voicing cobra commander cat williams that's it, that's it. That's it. cat williams is cobra commander or that's making two billion in the box office uh yeah uh, in all seriousness again uh i'm looking forward to the damn toys that would be coming out and the merchandise uh so we'll follow this along very closely but it's still super super early but i know that they have been been teasing that uh, for mm. some time and finally it comes to fruition so really exciting to see 
anything else in the world of pixels any other film or tv of interest to you all the last bit star trek discovery came back ah. and why i'm holding up john luke picard is because this last season they stole the entire plot from an episode of the next generation uh it was an episode called the chase where all these scientists get together and try and figure out who was this ancient race that created all the creatures in the universe. So TNG did that in one episode. They are spreading this across the entire season on Discovery. I uh, watched the first two episodes, and it's sort of like a completely different show, because this is now like an action-adventure show with a lot of special effects and a lot of action scenes. And it's more like the J.J. Abrams movies than any of the previous seasons. So if you like that, then yeah. check out. Yeah. If you don't, you We can have had numerous conversations about this after the second season and they sent them into the, uh, into the uh, future. That was like the end of the show. That was the beginning of the end for the show. Uh, I, I, I just I can't stomach watching the show. It's just it's <laughs> not written. It's it's not written well. It's uh, the characters don't seem like any kind of characters from uh, the Star uh, Star Trek universe. And you know when you have lower decks that the actors in the situation they're animated and they perform better than the actual characters on live action. This is the same falling in. But you got like Strange New Worlds is great. The last season of Picard really picked up because the second season of Picard was really bad. But the third season, this has just been one of those shows where I think that, that it started off great and it was a lot of great promise for it. And then they just went just completely crazy with the um, change from it's not something that would be done into the Star Trek universe. And it's just really hurt it. And I don't like most of the characters. I, the, most of the storylines have not really been that good. It's just one of those. It's like the biggest disappointment because people were seeing Enterprise was like a complete disappointment. I've rewatched that show and it's significantly better than Discovery. So they spelt their own doom. I'm glad it's the final season for them. I don't plan to watch it for them to write off into their trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh... Again, I think there's some question marks about like what what's next for this Star Wars uh, franchise, uh, Star Star Wars Star Trek franchise. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been able to get into any of the the, the new stuff, and I think um, what might get me in is another feature film. And I know they've talked about well, that for a while. They just announced today. Uh, nice, that a new one is on the way. That's going to be an origin of Star Trek, they said. So it's going to take place before even the Kirk era. Okay. Uh, so more into like what Enterprise was. Okay. But, um, yeah, and they're doing that before they do a sequel to like a Star Trek four with the uh, Chris Pine cast. Okay. I, yeah. I got my interest to see who they cast. But uh, that'd be interesting to do some origin stuff for sure. Um. Hey, if you're uh, if you're liking what you're listening to or viewing, uh, subscribe. It's super easy to do. It helps the channel grow. Drop a like uh, and tell us your thoughts uh, on what uh, you're thinking about the new Amazon Fallout series, Star Wars. What excites you? What do you think about GI Joe or Transformers? We love to hear your thoughts. Um, but we are going to segue into our next topic and that is plastic so before that uh last uh week we did a contest uh for the person who would drop a comment uh, we would pick a random winner of our last video, our last stream, and we do have a winner, and that is Junkman. I think uh, Junkman. What's the title? Of the guy, the, the Junk Cartel. Junk Cartel. <laughs> junk man. But that, like, I'm yeah, get the 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 username. So we'll definitely send you mm -hmm. your choice of toy or T-shirt. We'll reach out to you and get that to you. But thanks for listening, man. We appreciate the support. As always, the Junk Cartel family. 
uh, and friends. We we much appreciate it. But I think the big topic uh, for this week was the NECA Holothon. So NECA, the big uh, toy company mm-hmm. that produces a lot of different uh, license lines and their big ones, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They do the horror lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do a lot of the epic franchises. So every year they do this big thing, this partnership with Target. Uh, where the first uh, handful of days you can go to Target and theoretically there's a big banner and there's lots of inventory and excitement and then followed by on a Friday, which was today, an online sales where you could pick up some of your favorite stuff and they do drops over the next couple of weeks. I know this was covered pretty significantly on the Toy Box Chronicles. So for Mm -hmm. those of you listening, uh, you check out the Toy Box Chronicles this week's episode that aired on Wednesday didn't go so well. The NECA mm-hmm. Holothon. I went to multiple targets mm-hmm. and I didn't see a banner. I didn't see any directions. Nobody knew what the hell I was talking about. I could not find one single figure. Um, and I think a lot of people felt the same way of like, oh, what the man. hell is happening? And then learning that those things were put out weeks in advance, mm-hmm. uh, and that all of the folks got them way before this NECA holothon started. I know Mr. Chet Maddox finally came up on an amazing score and mm-hmm. actually going to these targets every day, scouting out toys. But mm-hmm. unfortunately the NECA holothon was not as expected. I, I think next year you're gonna have to re-title uh, it as the Disappointathon because <laughs> that's, that's what it seemed like it did. Again, we did touch on this on Wednesday, but uh, today was actually a first day. Most of the stuff they put out early. I don't understand why you have a drop date of April 12th and then weeks before you put the stuff out. And then the killer of it was is that I'm seeing like the Punk Turtles that you know this huge thing that was. From NECA, and it's probably the most sought after thing of the Holothon. It's up on like, you know, all kind of flipping sites and everything for 400, 500 bucks. That's ridiculous. And it's supposed to drop today. And of course, there was some um, some other uh, YouTubers today that went on. Uh, I think uh, Chet got up early this morning to hit targets, but he also on uh, the Mad Hatter was up and like they were, things were selling out in seconds. Like I, I, I was uh, I set this on Toy Box Chronicle. We'll say it here: If you're a manufacturer and you're putting toys in the hands of Walmart and Target, good luck to you because they're gonna kill your absolute buying audience because they have done a terrible job. Walmart has completely screwed up any of their collector cons and all the stuff that they've been doing. This holothon has been a Target cannot be held responsible to like plan events and everything else because they completely and targets done this two times in the same week we're going to talk about that next but they just like stop you need to stop the exclusive with the big box toys uh stores because they're they're killing you walmart and target is killing you and i i went to six targets only because you know we were doing the show i would have never went uh, I probably just would have done things online, but I wanted to see if I could find anything. I'm out here in the Inland Empire in Southern California. Nothing. Not a shelf, not an aisle, not a bag, not any situation. It was like nothing had been done. And that's six local targets in my area. Well, and you can't do anything online, as Chet showed us this morning, <laughs> where you go to their website and it says, oh, you have to go to the store if you want to actually buy this, yes. which it has, it's been out for weeks now, and there's none more on the shelf. Yeah, it, it's, it's ridiculous. And it's just, again, it's like, what ends up happening, really, this is because, like, the Punk Turtles were, like, 150 Like, you're buy, that's for collectors. That's absolutely no way there's not going to be any parent that's walking in the store and he's going to hand that over to his kids at 150 And right now, what they need to be thinking about is, like, if you're going to do a 150 item like that, they probably could have done a $60 item that probably didn't have as many heads and as many accessories and everything. But you could have gotten, like, a lesser version of that and it pleased fans. Because what you really did was somebody walked into the store, didn't see it there, Somebody got up at five o'clock this morning <clears throat> time to get on and do this, and you still couldn't get it there. So what did you really do? You just brought disgruntled uh, buying public, and somebody probably saying, "You know what?" And that goes that shapes on NECA. Target's not getting any flack for this. 
people are looking at the actual manufacturer. People are pissed at, at NECA right now. It doesn't seem very smart how they're doing things, man. Yeah, and I think the, the excitement of like limited drops, mm -hmm. like the stuff has already shown up in stores and people have it. So when you announce it online of drops, it's kind of like, okay, like we've seen these things. Mm -hmm. So I think like moving forward outside of the logistics and the street dates and all that stuff and you know some targets participating some not they should hold off until like the friday for exclusive online stuff like mm -hmm. drop some cool stuff in the stores and then say on friday exclusive stuff not found mm -hmm. in stores and then surprise us because we were expecting to maybe see some different stuff, but it was all the stuff that had been in the stores that people had already, the punk turtles and whatnot. Maybe over the next couple of weeks, it may it may be different. But, you know, I woke up at 6 a.m. and uh, yeah. nothing, nothing. Well, not even that, though. Not even having signage in the store. Now, you're saying this is an event. And I, I walk in the store and there's absolutely nothing. There's no aisle. There's no in cap or anything that says this is it and i've seen on other videos uh throughout youtube that there are certain stores that actually went through that maybe out here in southern california they just didn't care <laughs> like holathon any a day thon they didn't care but um it's just i know it's, it's making a lot of disgruntled fans i've had a couple of um like you know um toy buyers out here that normally just get in the store and i was getting like messages this morning like hey man don't go to this target because this is BS. And it was like, you know, it's like, yeah, I was there yesterday. And again, flippers, you've only made the flipping public go because again, these things are, I saw the punk turtles were like four and five hundred dollars. And that was before today. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wow, you just like at that point, who's gonna pay triple the amount to get those items? So they, you know, Target and Walmart need to do better. And it's just something that I don't know if, like, you know, Hasbro and NECA and all these toy companies need to sit down because they're constantly botching things up. Dr. Brentley can famously tell you <laughs> how bad Target shipping is. <laughs> well, Walmart's uh, Walmart's on par, to be honest with you. I've seen some, I've seen some interesting things from Walmart, too. And that's what I would say is if you're looking for better shipping and a guaranteed uh, mint-looking toys... What better way than our affiliate, and that is Entertainment Earth? You see how we like, you know, right, right in it. Like it was, it was a, uh, it was literally a ten-minute commercial into that. Just kidding, but uh, you know, we announced last uh, last episode that uh, we do have, uh, we are an affiliate of uh, Entertainment Earth, where you can uh, buy all of a variety of different toys. We we love sponsoring the mom and pops. Uh, we continue to do that with uh, uh, one of our first ever sponsors. Um, but I think, uh, you know, for pre-ordering and things, look, mm -hmm. we're going to have a whatnot store, Pixels, Plastic, and Ink. And so we like to support, uh, you know, the independents. Uh, there's no question about it. So if you're looking for the hard to finds, the stuff that's out of stock, the old retro things, the cool custom pieces, that's the place to be. But if you're looking for like the new stuff, you know, some sometimes you need to get it from a big box. And rather mm -hmm. than going to the Targets and the Walmarts and not knowing if it's going to show up or in Dr. Brantley's case, you know, it's basically Indiana Jones with a missing leg. Uh, <laughs> then go go to Entertainment Earth. Um, I'm excited that uh, I think next week we will do a review both on Toy Box Chronicles mm -hmm. and here. And we'll drop a link for you all to pre-order. And look, it helps the show grow. It helps the show also uh, invest in itself so none of the money goes into our pocket it just goes back into the show to create some amazing content but uh, we're excited to uh, continue to work with them over the next uh, several episodes so speaking of toys hasbro gi joe mr storm mm. uh again what's going on so what's going on with gi joe man man it, what, what is happening it, it's it's another target fiasco <laughs> that's what's put down into it. We're going to get blacklisted. My wife's going to be like, I know. Can't we can't show our face in Target anymore. <laughs> I it's know. Okay. I can see it. Like, it Nobody right from Target's listening. Do so not let these good. gentlemen, it's all four of our faces in the front of the store. That's <laughs> pixel plastic. No more. <laughs> Don't wear this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You better, hey, all my. By the way, all my holothon uh, hunts this week, yeah. you know what you know what sweater I was wearing, just to make sure everybody knew, just so we yeah. knew everybody knew. 
Yeah, exactly. I went into representing, but now they might have blacklisted us. So I might actually <laughs> had to had to run their old name when we walk in the store. But uh, you know, they announced it on uh, Wednesday night a tease, and there's another YouTuber that got like uh, this um, information, and he was like, "Hey, you know, they're gonna actually they're gonna drop something in the next." He didn't know if it was gonna be the next night or whatever. No one knew. But he said, yeah, they just announced the Tiger Paw, which is a basically reprint of the uh, Cobra Ferret in ATV. So it's just a different coloring. They do this. Target has the uh, Tiger Force brand, which is a subdivision of G.I. Joe. Different coloring. Then they, they just take old vehicles, recolor it, and then put some. But this one actually came with a brand new character called Wreckage. So that's what made it a little bit more extreme. And then first thing Thursday morning... The item's up on Hasbro Pulse, and if you were a Pulse Premium member, well, maybe you got an email, and maybe you didn't. And so what ended up happening was no one knew that this dropped, <laughs> and then people are, like, calling people first thing in the morning, like, hey, man, it's, like, did you know the Tiger Paw dropped and everything? I said, well, wait a minute, man, it couldn't. Last night, they just showed a teaser image of it on a rumored <laughs> website. It wasn't even a real legit like, you know, um, it wasn't like a legit drop. It was just a rumor this is coming. No, surprise drop on Hasbro Pulse. Sold out in seconds. So then, you know, one of the Hasbro reps gets on, you know, because everybody was pissed and they get on to their social media forum and say, no, you know, hey, we're sorry. This was a situation. We didn't know it was going to happen. And there'll be more restock. And they, she said, when? Put it back up. 30 seconds later, it was sold out. And so I don't know what's going on with, like, the, the marketing team or something. But, you know, tease something the night before. Then drop it, especially if you're paying. Look, if you're paying $50 for the uh, Hasbro premium thing, you're pissed. Because there's a reason why you're paying that $50 is so you have an exclusive chance to purchase something. And it's like, wow, I've, I, I've never seen anything like this. And this is supposed to be exclusive that's supposed to go over to – Target at one point or another, too. So, uh, you know, I don't know. This was a weird toy week, man, where there's a lot of debacles mm -hmm. with the with the big companies, man. Now, call me crazy, but if you've got a bunch of people that want something <laughs> and your job is to sell it to them and manufacture it, wouldn't you just, like, take all the orders first? Like, oh, we got 2,000. Oh, we got 10,000 people that want this. And then you make it, and then you ship it to them. It's worked very well for thousands of years, you know. Mm. Uh, that kind that, of that, uh, that logic doesn't seep in anymore. But uh, they're, they're they're trying to build exclusivity. <laughs> but what they're doing is because again, it was all over. Like uh, I was on Instagram, I was on X, and everything, and people were like completely pissed. We were like, I can't believe this has happened again. I was like, Wow, man! It's like it, I it, this has been the worst week for like you know just in general pr and all the people behind it because there's been just a whole bunch of mistakes made and especially again both of the, the holothons at target and uh this tiger paw is supposed to pop up at target and i don't know if the retailer has a lot to do with that or it's hasbro itself or neca but they they got to figure this out man because this is the kind of situation where you're on a uh, you're on the edge with collectors and somebody will just turn their dollars at this point where everything's 30 seconds or less attention time to something else. And they're creating that scenario for themselves. But I just, I, I couldn't believe that where it was like the night before. And I said, wait a minute, they dropped it first. They didn't even announce they were dropping it. <laughs> I was like, well, that's what didn't make any sense. And I have to say, because I have the um, pulse app on my yeah. phone mm -hmm. and last week when they, announced a couple of things i got uh, a mm -hmm. little phone notification and this week nothing Not so you know it's, it works they just didn't like put it in to all the right people or what something I, I literally got a phone call and was like hey man the tiger paws up and everything and i i get up to check my phone and then i get like another phone call don't worry it's sold out <laughs> go back <to> sleep. <laughs> well it's it's almost like um like Hasbro is kind of taking a lot of flack recently. So this week as well. So they they announced some time ago 
a giant man has lab funded mm-hmm. project for mm-hmm. 199 you get the big giant man and it got mm-hmm. funded and it'll be shipping i think late october or november and people are like usually with like the galactus or the sentinel mm-hmm. that you would get you would get some other stuff like you get silver surfer you get the multiple tiers mm-hmm. and everyone was like this one seems kind of plain you're not getting much but the figure but hey it's 200 bucks it's not 400 or 500 dollars mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so this week uh i'll show you what was released so let me i'll just i'll just pres- i'll i'll share my screen real quick so you all okay. see what i'm talking about here and that is so this was um uh so this yeah. is the haslab figure that has mm-hmm. been funded there well, 14,000 backers and so the complaint was like you didn't get much else if you look here you mm-hmm. see you get the 24 inch 91 but nothing really else nothing mm-hmm. much they just announced this week a 50 dollar two pack of hank pym and uh giant man <laughs> all right and so people are like that should have been included in the damn giant man thing like what the hell and yeah. guess what you just can buy this right now wow. and it'll ship to your house tomorrow yeah. and so all these people especially yeah. the hasbro pulse P- premium wow. folks are like this belongs with giant man has lab pro like what is happening here so well, it was almost like they were going to create this and then they were like hmm we could actually sell this independently wow so it's pissing off a lot of like yeah. loyal people and especially the backers that spent you know 200 bucks for it so well think about it 200 dollars. you know that's pipe they look it didn't cost 200 dollars make a giant ant-man it didn't cost 200 dollars we all know that 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 they're factoring that you put mm-hmm. in, you know, you do the three uh the three tiers whenever you do anything for pricing. So that was already piped in, but those two characters are essential to the giant ant man. And then you just turn around and be like, Oh, oh, wait a minute, hold on. By the way, I know you put the two hundred dollars in, and I know you got because it'd be exactly you're right if they did the Galactus and then like you had went through and it was four hundred and fifty bucks, you get it. And then they tell you it'll be here in October. And then two weeks later, they release like the Silver Surfer, like mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> and you're like, "What is? Wh- wh- I that's that's a cash grab right there, and that's a terrible yeah. cash." Well, grab. Well, that's and I think wow. that's what people are saying. So. Wow, that's terrible cash grab. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, well, again, uh, hey, subscribe if you're watching. You haven't, please subscribe, like the video, share your thoughts. Uh, we're gonna jump into our next topic and the final topic of the evening, and that is. Ink. So, Marvel Comics Blood Hunt crossover vampire inspired crossover in the mcu uh what are your thoughts uh comic book fans but more importantly all of you have you have you taken a look at this um i haven't picked up these books i did some online research um but what say you about this they're hitting in may so that's the good part okay so they're not available yet yeah not yet but um you know they gave a um i've been in in just regularly now popping into a store uh especially a couple of stores that we know in general area and they've been uh putting out this little uh blood hunt preview and it's mm. just basically now i gotta give them the credit they're going back today because this is a free giveaway that they did in the store so they're kind of giving you all the um information of all the series and there's a complete list of all the books that's involved and everything on that let me make sure i'm getting that over in the screen right but uh, this it's it's a company crossover, and they're saying that it's not since uh, Civil War or Secret Invasion uh, that they've actually put this time and effort into it. One aspect that I thought was pretty good it's written by uh, Jade McKay, and it's drawn by a Pepe Laras. I hope I didn't butcher his last name. Uh, but the interesting fact is, it's going to do just like Civil War. There's going to be Blood Hunt. And it'll be a five issue series. But they've done something a little different that I haven't seen them do, and it's the first time they've done it. There's going to be the issues one through five, 
And then they're going to do a red band issue one through five. And it's going to be for a mature audience. So I don't know if they're going to have like additional pages drawn in, but I do know the language will change. So that's something that I haven't seen them quite do. So if you're like, let's say, you know, you're a mature reader and you read Blood Hunt, but you have a younger individual that you have that, you know, you want to get into reading comics or something, you can get the non-red band book and give them the name. They can have the same experience. But it's not kind of like, you know, it's kind of not in the mature level. So I think that's incredibly smart because, you know, you're you're growing up the audience for different readers, yet also, too, you're not leaving out a section of readers that you want to be introduced to that. So very, very intelligent, Marvel, on that one. Whoever came up with that idea, it's very good. But also, um, I heard one of the main things is like, you know, I'm a big Blade fan since the beginning. But they're saying there's going to be a point where Blade is kind of going to be uh, uh, teaming up with Miles Morales. I'm like, I, that's I think cool. I, I think I uh, want to yeah. see that. I yeah, think I want to see that. Yes. So you know, but um, it's it's supposed to be a, a some a, either supernatural event where everything's turned into uh, night and it's an endless night, and all the Marvel heroes have to rise because the vampires see it as a a huge take advantage moment. And uh, you know they're going to have, like, you know, classically, I can s- see Dracula popping up. Uh, they've got, uh, I'm looking at some of the books here. They're, it's going to be an amazing Spider-Man, uh, Black Panther. Uh, it's going to be, uh, obviously, uh, Dracula, Blood Hunt 1 through 3. Uh, they've got the Hulk, the Midnight Suns. I know Dr. Brentley mm-hmm. and I, that's our famous group, which is glad to have them back. Werewolf by Night, Wolverine. Uh, X Men. Uh, it's going to be the uh, X Men Blood Hunt, and then they're going to have uh, a second one: X Men uh, Blood Hunt Magic and Psylocke. Uh, you've got the Amazing Spider Man. We'll also have so they've got a whole bunch of uh, Spider Man issues. Avengers, Doctor Strange, Fantastic Four, Miles Morales, and uh, uh, Moon Knight, and also Venom. So mm. where's trying- Morbius? Uh, um, I think he's actually um, that he's probably in the Midnight Suns book. Okay, okay. because I know he's a member. And early like, retirement oh. after the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> and then obviously you know the Ghost Rider. You know all these characters mm-hmm. will pop up, but for them to do an ambitious because look, we had gotten like you know uh, crossover fatigue for a while. You know they had we kept doing crossover over crossover, mainline crossovers. DC did it, and it just did it to death. And I think this is probably the right time to actually do it because we haven't seen one in a while. But yet, this is something very interesting. This is more of a grounded level version of them, kind of like the Defenders kind of scenarios on the uh, MCU. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to something new, something I'm not going to probably, I'm probably going to end up purchasing just a couple of books because I'm not a person that goes through the main line and buys everything. Uh, There's probably be like, you know, maybe some like Blade, probably Dracula, uh, a couple others, maybe Doctor Strange, but uh, it's kind of nice to see them getting back in this format. Uh, they gave, like I said, this preview book right here. It's called The Blood Hunt Diaries. It's free. If you go down to the local comic book store, they're putting it into your uh, bag when you purchase something, but they showed the artwork in it, and wow. The the artwork and the covers, uh, this has a chance to like you know bring in some casual fans and hopefully some new fans, so bravo marvel you know this is how you put an event out um you know it doesn't seem like it's not something that we're used to kind of seeing from them the whole supernatural all the lines so i'm looking forward to it nice but the one thing though is that with all the different variant covers mm-hmm. and the mature book and the regular book there's going to be 59 different titles in this crossover mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that is a huge expense if you actually want to go in and follow the whole thing. Almost yeah, but you know too what? much, I think. I don't know. know anyone that really kind of like there. There's a couple of completists, but rarely is I think you gravitate to the books you want to read. There's some people that are not into the Hulk and they love the X Men, um, and they're saying that it's not so. It's while it's kind of connected, it's not connected in a way that they do in like most of the DC events. Where, where you need like, to like, you need to buy read to, this book yeah, to read this yeah. book to read that book. They've kind of kept it together, but yet separate. So if you don't read, like I said, you're not in Spider-Man, but you're in a Doctor Strange, you'll still print it. As long as you pick well, up probably the initial Blood Hunt book, 
you'll probably be able to understand what the series is kind of going on. If, about. if it's essentially just, you know, hey, vampires are loose, and mm-hmm. then all of our heroes have to deal with their, mm-hmm. you know, vampire that comes t- their way, you know, uh, that, you know, that's easy to do, and you don't have to cross exactly. everything. And um, and there's the, the Avengers one, and I remember back in the day, it was a what if, and I was always hoping that the, the Disney Plus series would have done it, but it was like, uh, what if uh, Wolverine uh had fought the vampires and it was like a, a big what if book in the day and i was like wow that's when they used to do those things kind of right and the avengers and the x-men is going to be in this so now we don't have the what if we're actually going to find out what will happen so it's kind of cool and yeah uh also they're uh teasing that someone's gonna die of course you know always. Mm-hmm. now probably not dead the someone's probably going to get turned into a vampire and that will just change their character story you know if they're if it's like a, a regular book you know character sure. and you know um, we've always wanted to be see an what... interesting story it's 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 going to be superman <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking i'm thinking it's probably going to be the hulk or something you know that'd be cool <laughs> so, you know. i think we'll hulk. I think what would be interesting is uh, when this releases, mm-hmm. all of us get assigned a couple of titles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of do a, a bit of a recap on those things. So I yeah, think, I think, uh, we, plan, I think we could talk about like if there's any specific characters or books that you've done already that you'd be mm-hmm. willing to t- you know read. Um, and then we should catch up and see how things are, are taking shape. But it seems like a pretty big event in the uh, Marvel comic book uh, universe. So good uh, and might get me back into comics a little bit more so exactly we'll see exactly yeah awesome uh well uh we can't wrap up the show without again thanking our sponsor we already uh said entertainment earth uh definitely our uh, uh we have an affiliate link that we'll share again uh, for any pre-orders or any of your toy needs it helps the show grow, uh, show grow but also mr storm Mr. Storm Toys versus Games in Wilmington, yeah. California from day one. Mm-hmm. And that's what's also great about, you know, when we were just starting out, Toys versus Games said, "Want I want to sponsor these guys. And uh, they are a mom and pop store. And again, of course, you've heard <laughs> we have Entertainment Earth and they're a, a massive organization. But yet also our show wants to actually spotlight the mom and pops and the small retailers out there that are struggling because we do know that they're struggling and storage versus games is a place that shadow goes into all the time. And, you know, Tony, the owner and his wife are very nice individuals. Uh, You feel like you're like, you know, in a home environment when you walk in there, they treat you with such great customer service. And it's always, if there's something that you're unknowledgeable on, ask them because they will probably be able to, Give you some knowledge or if there's something that you're looking for, particularly, maybe they might have it for you. And it's not just the title says toys versus game. It's not just toys. They also have vintage video games and actual vintage video game systems. And I know a bunch of my friends that love playing older, like, you know, Super Nintendos and the old original NESs. Where can Mm -hmm. you get the games from? Well, you go to toys versus games. They're located in Wilmington, California. Tell them that Pixels Plastic and Ink sent you. It's Shadow's preferred store. We thank them for being the sponsor. Yes, sir. Uh, we've talked about it, our whatnot. So whatnot, mm-hmm. for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's basically uh, a seller's live stream where you could pick up a variety of different cool goods from uh, toys, comics, clothing, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we're going to do our whatnot uh, pop-up uh, first ever launch show where we'll be selling all kinds of cool toys, uh, merchandise, memorabilia, uh, we are uh, setting it for the 27th of April at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Unless things change, that's the date. But as we get closer to that, we'll definitely keep you all posted. But uh, really excited. Uh, we'll incorporate some of the stuff we do in the podcast as well, along with some some, some selling and some other cool stuff. I think uh, just tune in. I think you'll have some fun watching it. And then as, uh, as we've released the, our show, uh, our first episode last week, we got pixels, plastic, and ink.com. If you're interested in t shirt hoodies and other limited drops coming up, you could see Mr. Storm uh, and Dr. Brantley uh, wearing some of our merchandise. So that helps support the show as well. 
Big, big uh, weekend last weekend in the world of wrestling. Wow. WrestleMania, The Rock, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes. You'd have to be living under the rock without reading about wrestling. Mm -hmm. That is a hot topic. And Shadow and the Tech Master have released a series of videos and will continue to do so. So if you are into wrestling, check those out. They're small segments, a couple of minutes each. Shadow uh, gives his perspective on all things wrestling, stories of the past. And uh, the Tech Master, Eric, is definitely fired up. Uh, about what's yes, happening in uh, in AEW. Uh, so please uh, follow them here on the Shadow Knows Network. And then lastly, uh, we got a Retro Rewind Club coming soon. Toy Box Chronicles live stream, Mr. Storm and Chet Maddox every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, 10 p.m. Eastern. Lots of other cool videos. Please, again, subscribe, like uh, here on the Shadow Knows Network and Pixels Plastic Inc., Gentlemen, any other thoughts for this evening? Absolutely. Be kind to one another when you're traveling in the stores this week. Holothons out there, a bunch <laughs> of other things. People are actually, you know, there's all kinds of situations that people are trying to fight for items and everything or going online and everything. Be kind to one another. And also, check out the short. If you're in the Georgia area, Mr. Maddox has done you a favor. There, He has put a punk turtle on the shelf, if you watch the short, you'll find out what story because he tells you what story it's in. Hopefully, you know, someone else hasn't popped in and watched that because it is blowing up. But you might get a surprise if you're looking for those punk turtles. Mr. Maddox did somebody a favor out there in the Georgia area. <laughs> Especially if they're selling for three and four <laughs> exactly. times what they're actually yeah. worth. <laughs> now, this will be actually the actual sticker price of 150 So, yeah, you know, but check out that video. But, yeah, no, just, just be kind to one another. You know, just like you're in the stores and everything else like that is enough for everybody. <laughs> you know, even yeah. though it doesn't seem like it, there's enough for everybody. It's not Fallout. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> okay. It's Holothon. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, off, folks. We will see you next uh, week on Pixels Plastic Inc. on the Shadow Nose Network. Have a good night. Everybody.